Hi guys, today we are on question number one of 1,000. So I'll be answering 1,000 videography questions every single day, and I'll be posting them on YouTube and other social media platforms. So if you have any questions in videography, you can just ask in the comment section, and I'll create a video about it and post it just like this one. So today, uh, the question is, what are the best camera settings for videography? So without wasting time, let's get straight into the answers. So there are six camera settings that you must understand as a videographer before I tell you which settings you should set how. So these are exposure controls, frame rate, a white balance, picture profiles, codex, and uh, number six, resolution. So let's start with exposure controls. There are three gates that controls the exposure in a camera, which are aperture, uh, shutter speed, and uh, ISO. These three settings work together to determine how much light reaches your camera sensor, ultimately affecting the brightness of your image. Let's start with aperture, which is represented by f-stops, like uh, f1.2, f2.8, f3.5. So this one controls the size of the opening in the lens. Sometimes it is even called iris. It is the one that brings light inside a camera. A wider aperture has got lower f-stop number like f1.2, f1.8, f2.8, and it lets in more light at lower aperture, resulting in your image being bright. Aperture also affects uh, background blur, you know, the depth of field. So at lower aperture number like f1.8, you have more background blur or a shallower depth of field. So if that is your kind of uh, filming style where you want shallow depth of field, the setting that you need to control is the aperture or get the lenses that have got uh, a lower f-stop number like f1.2. A narrower aperture has got high f-stop number like f8, f16, and uh, f22, and so on, creating the image to be darker and uh, making everything else to be in focus. So if you are struggling with focusing, with putting your subject in focus, you can actually get everything into focus by just shooting at a, a higher aperture number. Aperture can be controlled via the lens itself, especially if you're using one of those cinema lenses. Uh, they have got manual aperture control, as well as electronically, if you're using native lenses that have got like uh, autofocus and stuff like that. So you can always control the aperture electronically on the camera or manually on the lens. Away from aperture, let's talk about ISO. ISO controls the camera sensor's sensitivity to light. It is responsible for the image quality. A higher ISO number makes the camera sensor more sensitive to light, resulting in a brighter image. However, increasing the ISO also introduces something else, which is digital noise in your image, you know, the grain footage, which is always almost never wanted in videos. So what ISO value should you set your camera on in order to get a cleaner image? This is where native base ISO comes in. Native base ISO is simply the highest ISO number your camera can shoot without introducing digital noise in your video. On the Red Scarlet X where I'm filming this video on, the native base ISO is 800. So it means any ISO value that I can put which is below 800, my image will be cleaner. The moment I go above 800 ISO, the image will start having digital grain. On my Lumix GH5, the native base ISO is 400. So I can film anything below 400, but the moment I start to go above 400, I'll start introducing that digital noise. So you don't want that. So each and every camera that you are using or that you are having right now has its own native base ISO. And for you to find out what is the native base ISO of your camera, just go on Google and search for it. Shutter speed controls how long the camera sensor is exposed to light. It is the curtain in front of your camera sensor, which opens and closes at a certain speed. And the speed at which it opens and closes is what is known as the shutter speed. A slower shutter speed allows more light in, creating a brighter image, but potentially blurring the objects, uh, especially if the object is moving. Faster shutter speed lets in less light inside the camera, resulting in a darker image, but freezing motion. What I mean is if you are shooting at a faster shutter speed and you pause the video, everything will be in focus, meaning you can freeze a frame or you can freeze an image from your video, as opposed to shooting at a slower shutter speed, which lets in more light, but when you freeze that picture or that video, the picture taken will be very blurry, especially on moving objects. So what is the correct shutter speed that you should set your camera in? The correct shutter speed is to set it at double the frame rate. So whatever frame rate that you are shooting in, if you are shooting at 25 frames per second, set your shutter speed at 1 50th of a second. If you are shooting at 30 frames per second, set your shutter speed at 1 60th of a second. And if you are shooting at 60 frames per second, set your shutter speed at uh, 1 20 
front f of a second. So that is the correct setting for shutter speed. Always double the frame rate. And talking about frame rate, let's move to the second camera setting that you must know, which is frame rate itself. When you are watching a video, you are actually watching pictures that are being played at a certain speed, usually in seconds. If you are playing this video at uh, six pictures per second, this is how it would look. And if you are playing it at 12 pictures per second, this is how it would look. And uh, if you are playing it at uh, 25 frames per second or 25 pictures per second, this is how it will look and uh, it will be a perfect motion. So in videography, these pictures are what we call frames. So they can be 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. So frame rate is simply the speed at which these frames are played to create this motion. So this is not really like motion, it is just an illusion of pictures that are being played at a certain speed. Frame rates affect the natural look of the video. So what frame rates must you set your camera in? So the first thing that you need to consider when setting up frame rate for your video is um, the broadcast standard in the region where you are in. There are three broadcast standards that are common today. Uh, these are NTSC, there's PAL, P-A-L, and there's S-E-C-A-M. NTSC is mostly used in um, the United States, Japan, and other countries in those regions, and they broadcast videos at 29.97 frames per second. PAL is mostly used in Africa and Australia and they broadcast their videos at 25 frames per second and then CCAM or SECAM is mostly used in Russia, China and they broadcast their videos at 25 frames per second too. So if you are shooting something that will be broadcasted on TV, use a frame rate that is available in your region which could be 25 frames per second or 29.97 frames per second. If you are shooting a movie or a documentary and you want it to look cinematic, the correct frame rate for cinematic look is 23.976 frames per second or 24 frames per second. This is the frame rate that is used in movies. It is the closest frame rate to a human's natural eye. And if you want to create a smooth slow motion video, you should shoot at a higher frame rate, like 50 frames per second, 60 frames per second, 100 frames per second, or even higher. So anytime I'm shooting a talking head like this one, or maybe I'm shooting an interview, or maybe I'm shooting something that I want to play at a normal speed, I usually set my frame rate at either 23.976 frames per second, 24 frames per second, for that natural cinematic look or at 25 frames per second if I'm intending to broadcast what I'm shooting since I'm in Africa the standard broadcast frame rate is 25 frames per second. If I'm shooting a product video or maybe I'm doing a live stream I usually set my frame rate to either 29.97 frames per second or 30 frames per second for a smooth and sharp looking footage. And for any of my slow motion videos this can be b-roll clips for a certain shot during the wedding or maybe some b-roll clips when I'm doing music videos I usually shoot at a higher frame rate of 60 frames per second and mostly at 96 frames per second if I really want it to be more slow. Now let's come to white balance. White balance is a setting in your camera which ensures colors in your photos and videos appear natural and accurate. A white shirt may appear bluish, yellowish, orangish, or greenish based on the light source it is in. Our eyes can automatically adjust uh, the white shirt as pure white under different lighting condition. However, cameras require manual adjustments to achieve the same result that your eye can see. Different light sources have got different color temperatures that is measured in the units of Kelvin. So if you pick up a camera and you don't understand anything that has to do with white balance, you can use auto white balance available in every camera. Most cameras have got auto white balance settings that attempts to automatically adjust white balance for you based on the lighting condition that you are in but I don't recommend it because it's not accurate. You can also use white balance presets that is available in your camera like the fluorescent, daylight, flash, cloudy, shade, which I also don't recommend because they are not accurate as well. For the most precise control of white balance, you can set a custom white balance manually using the correct Kelvin value from the light source that you are filming under. When you're shooting indoors, it depends what kind of lighting is being used to light the room. If it is candlelight, you can set your white balance uh, between 1000 Kelvin and uh, 2000 Kelvin. If it is home tungsten or warm fluorescent lighting, you can set your white balance between 2500 and uh, 3900 Kelvin. 
If you're shooting using natural lighting, it depends at what time of the day are you shooting your video. If you're shooting at twilight or blue hour, which is the 30 minutes before sunrise or the 30 minutes after sunset, you can set your white balance between 9,000 and 10,000 Kelvin. If you're shooting at a midday, you can set your white balance to around 5,500 Kelvin. And if you are shooting at golden hour, which is one hour after sunrise and one hour before sunset, you can set your white balance to somewhere around 2000 Kelvin and 3000 Kelvin. But if you are doing creative lighting where you have different colored lights in your scene, set your white balance based on what your eyes can naturally see. Now, moving on, let's talk about picture profiles. A picture profile is a function in your camera that enables you to adjust the color, the tone, the contrast and sharpness of your video according to your liking. Picture profiles goes hand in hand with the bit depth of your camera. So you have to know whether your camera is shooting in 8-bit, 10-bit or 12-bit when talking about our picture profiles. The first category, we have flat picture profile like the V-Log L, the C-Log or S-Log which will give you all the freedom when it comes to color grading. But only choose flat picture profile if your camera is able to record at least a 10-bit or 12-bit. Because at this bit depth, there is more color information for you to stretch your image, especially when you're doing color grading. It captures a lot of color information as opposed to a camera that is shooting only in 8-bit, which captures just really like few information of your image. But you can still choose a flat picture style even if your camera is shooting only in 8-bit, which is going to be very harder for you to pull out all the color information from an 8-bit footage, especially if you are filming in a flat picture profile. Some of that flatness will be baked in the image and you really struggle to bring back all the colors. So if your camera can only shoot in 8-bit, then let's come to the second category, uh, which is standard or natural picture profile. Standard or natural picture profile captures most color information already in your footage, like how you can really see things naturally with your eyes. They are not too vibrant and contrasty. At the same time, they are not too flat. So they give you uh, some room to play around with a few colors in color grading and you can actually really achieve good color grading while using natural or standard picture profile. It's not really a deal breaker, but this is a picture profile that you should choose if you are using an 8-bit camera because you already have enough color information. It captures a lot of color information. So when you are doing your color grading in post, you don't have to pull out the whole colors from your image like the way you have to do it when you are using a flat picture profile. So which picture profile should you choose for your video? Uh, the picture profile you choose depends on what you want your video to look like or what you want to do with your video. So before I go out and film anything, I come up with a look that I want for my video and I'll choose an appropriate picture profile. So if I'm gonna be, if I'm intending to do color grading, I'll choose mostly a flat picture profile. But if I'm doing something like a wedding video and it doesn't really need so much color grading, I'll choose a natural or a standard picture profile. Another important setting in your camera that you must know is the format or the codec your camera is recording your videos in. When you go to your camera settings under record formats, you see different formats there like uh, AVC, HD, MP4, MOV, ProRes, H.264 or HEVC, just to mention a few. The recording format or the codec that you select in your camera will affect the image quality as well as uh, determine how much data your camera can record video in terms of bitrate. Now, which one is the best recording format that you should choose in your camera? So when it comes to recording format, this will be determined by the camera itself. Some cameras may come with a certain recording format and codecs, while others will come with certain other recording formats. So all the cameras don't use really like the same recording format. Other cameras, they use ProRes. Other cameras, they might use MOV. Other cameras, they might use HEVC. So this is something that you really need to check from your camera itself. What you need to do is to go through the recording formats that are available in your camera. Record a video clip in each recording format that is available in your camera and then take those clips in a computer and go through each one of them to see which one has got the best quality and which one has got the lowest quality. And also something that you need to know about this recording format and our codecs is some codecs might really record high data whereby your computer is even failing to play it smoothly, therefore affecting your 
editing workflow. So when you are choosing the recording format, you have to keep in mind the editing workflow that you have and also how big the computer that you have is, whether it's going to be able to handle that footage or not. Lastly, let's look at uh, resolution settings. Resolution is simply the dimensions of your video in terms of width and height. It has got nothing to do with the quality of the video. It's just really the size. You know, resolutions are made up of pixels. Now, if you are wondering what resolution you must use for your videos, of all the resolutions that are available right now, only three resolutions are common. That is half HD, which is 1280 by 720. And then we have full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. Then we have 4K, which is 3840 by 2160, which is ultra HD. And then we have true DCI 4K, which is 4096 by 2160. Though half HD 720 is still being used, especially when uploading your content to social media, it uh, has become outdated. So I wouldn't recommend you to shoot your videos in half HD. It has a low resolution. Full HD, which is 1080p, is the current standard resolution for most videography works right now. It has a high resolution and the picture quality is high too. So if you have a camera that can shoot in full HD, you are good in 2024. 4K, on the other hand, is becoming a new standard. It is actually almost 50-50 with 1080p in terms of uh, demand. Most people these days, they want 4K videos as well. For this reason, I shoot all my video works in 4K because 4K is more of a future proof. So I will highly recommend that you shoot all your videos in 4K, but if Full HD is all you can afford, it is still very much okay even in 2024. Now, coming back to the question, what are the best camera settings? Now, there is nothing like the best camera settings as these settings may change based on what the videographer wants to achieve, what conditions the videographer is shooting the videos in and where the videographer intends to publish that video. So as a videographer, you are the only person who should know what are the best camera settings for the project that you are filming. And if you want to understand more about this kind of stuff, I have a course DSLR Cinematic Filmmaking which goes into deeper details about all this kind of stuff, like lenses and how they affect your image, camera movement and camera angles, compositions, lighting, recording good sound, and so many other stuff. So you can check out the course at ufc.unifyinventive.net. And just a reminder, I am answering 1000 videography questions. So if you have any question, you can just drop it in the comment section. I will answer it. Otherwise, I'll see you again tomorrow in the next video where I'll be answering other questions. This is it for now. Peace.